<laughs> what is going on guys? Tadashi Screams here and uh, it's been a while since I posted a video. I apologize. Things have been really hectic. But um, uh, I figured I'd finally get around to it and I did. It's just, you know, work, school and other things have been piling up. So, uh, but I'm glad that I'm finally able to get to sit down. I hope I can start doing this a few more times a week, more so than usual. Um, I am... Um, I'm not really going to do a Let's Play video today, uh, as a matter of fact, it's not a Let's Play at all. Um, I know what I'm going to see in the comments after this video, if there are any comments, and people are going to be telling me I stole this shit, I don't really want that, I mean, I, I guess technically you could say I did, I, like, I'm a big fan of like, Leafy, Pyro Cynical, um, Leafy is here, and Pyro, Cynical, those are some of my favorite YouTubers, I love those guys, and uh, Leafy especially, you know, I saw some of his stories in the past, and they were hilarious, and I was like, hey, I'm not like as interesting as that all, but uh, hopefully I can think of some, and I did, you know, I, I thought of a few stories I could tell and have a little bit of fun with that, so um, yeah, today I'm going to tell you the story of Lil Micah in the sixth grade and the time I decided it would be a good idea to sell weed now before before I go any deeper into that I want you guys to understand I didn't have some like druggy background alright I was like 12 okay uh, I lived in a good family you know no one in my family okay one someone in my family may have smoked weed but that's all beside the point until later on um, you know I uh, in the sixth grade I didn't have a lot of friends, like, straight up. I was a kind of a loner. Um, like, I wasn't... I'm not gonna say I was, like, bullied. I wasn't. I wasn't, like... I mean, I guess kids kind of, like, made fun of me sometimes because I was a loner. But, I mean, I preferred to be alone. I was the kid who at recess would, like, sit in the corner and, like, play on my DS and be, like, playing Pokemon or something while all the other kids are off, you know, actually doing something, tag or whatever it is they did. And, um... I remember one day, I'm sitting there, I think I was like reading a book or something, and um, this one kid walks up to me, and I knew this kid kind of, um, let's just call him Jonathan, okay, um, Jonathan walks up to me, and you know, he, he cuts right to the chase, he walks up and he's like, so, I heard you can get me some weed. And instantly, all these red flags just start going off. I'm just like, what? I have ne I've never sold weed. I've never smoked weed. Who told you this? Is this getting around to the teachers? Oh my goodness, I am going to jail. And, and then I kind of calm down. And he's like, but don't worry. I'm not going to tell. As a matter of fact, I was wondering if you could get me some. And that's when I'm like, okay. Okay, I get it. I'm a loner. I sit in the class, back of the class, and play games while you guys are out socializing, and, I mean, but I can, I guess I assume, I should assume this was gonna eventually happen, where they're like, look at that, look at that loser in the back of the classroom, that faggot, and, so, yeah, um, he's sitting there, he's asking me to buy weed, and me, being the bright ass I was, decides, okay, you know what, yeah, I can get you some weed. Now, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, where am I going to get weed to sell this kid? I should have been saying, why am I going to try and get weed to sell this kid? Okay. But I didn't. I wasn't that smart, okay? I, um, uh, I go home that night, and let's just say I contact someone close to me, who I actually know who smokes weed, and I tell him, hey, this kid... He's like 12, he's my age, he's in my class, wants to buy some weed, and this dude is automatically like, okay, I think we can do that. So, I, uh, I, I go to him, and he gives me something, and I don't really remember what he said, but basically, what I got out of this was he explained that this was not even basically weed, like, the crap he gave me was so weak like i'm not even sure it was weed i'm not sure it was marijuana he called it sweet grass and you know he explained that there is no way in the world they could get high off this stuff so i take it back 
and um, I sell it to him for 20 bucks, and it was just a little bit. There was like nothing in there. It was a little one of those little orange medicine bottles, and um, yeah, he uh, he buys it for 20 bucks, and I'm kind of holding this 20, and I'm sitting there like, whoa, I'm 12. 20 is a lot of money to me, so I'm like, this is this is great. I didn't even do anything, so I go home and I give the dude who gave it to me 10 bucks, and he's like, you can keep 10 bucks, and I was like, what? So yeah, you can imagine at this point it escalated, okay? I sold weed. I, I wasn't a drug dealer. I was by no means a drug dealer. I did not even smoke weed. And I'm not, again, I'm not sure this was even weed. I smelled it one time, and it smelled like, I don't know, like, like mint or something. Okay. Um, he, um, so I continue this, and I should have stopped while I was ahead. Okay, but I didn't. I liked the thought of making a little money. I was making, I made like, I think in the entire time I did this, I made like 200 bucks. So that now that looking back, it was not worth it. But at the time, I didn't feel that way. I didn't feel like it wasn't worth it. 10 bucks, 10 bucks was worth it to me. Okay, so Cameron comes back and he's like, that was the best, that was the best stuff I have ever had in my life. I would like to buy some more. So he does, he keeps on coming back. And I'm like, what? And my brother, I tell my brother, and he's like, that's, that is so stupid. So th these kids are like 12 and they're running around like, I'm smoking the good kush. It's so good. I love it so much. I, I want to just smoke it and smoke it and smoke it. Well, um, of course, being the bright ass I was, I continued. Cameron goes ahead and starts telling his other weed enjoying friends that his friends who also like to smoke weed, or that he smoked with, and they all suddenly start coming to me. These are kids that I never met, okay? I knew they were in my class and stuff, but I had never met them. So they all start coming to me, and they're like, so I hear you got the hookups, and I'm like, well, I guess I do. So in the back of my head, of course, I'm still thinking, oh no, I need to stop now. This is getting out of hand. I've got like 10 people coming to me. I'm basically a drug dealer. This isn't good. I, I'm going to jail. So uh, one day, this is actually about a year later, I mean, I did this all through the 6th grade, and come uh, 7th grade, um, or was it 8th, this is actually hard, I think it was 8th grade, so about 2 years, 8th grade rolls along, and I still haven't got caught, at this point I've let it go to my head, I am the school drug dealer, everyone's coming to me to buy sweet grass, they're so stupid, okay, mind you, I'm gonna fill you in on something, this was a private school, okay? I went to a little Christian private school, and these kids were sheltered, all right? They were sheltered beyond all belief, and it was amazing. Like, I was sheltered, I guess, growing up, but not like these kids. So the fact that they, I guess, because they were getting a hold of what they thought was weed, or maybe it was still, I'm unsure. I don't want to go back and find out, but they were telling me that this was the shit. It was the bomb shit. And I was making good money off of it at the time. All right, so they come back over and over. And one day I'm sitting in the auditorium or like it's the gym or something. And I'm just sitting at a wall and I think I'm actually playing on my DS. And Sam, we're going to call him Sam, what comes over to me. And this is like the second person I ever sold to. And Cameron follows him. And Sam sits down by me and he's being all cool. He's being nonchalant. And he goes, hey, dude. The vice principal is looking for you. I think he found us out. And I'm thinking, oh shit, you are kidding me right now. You're telling me the vice principal. And then he goes, oh, and not just the vice principal, but the principal and the math teacher and the football coach. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, it's over. Well, they come through these big swinging doors. And the reason we were in the gym, we were waiting on the bus to come pick us up. Okay. So the bus rolls around, and at the exact same time, I see those four people, the math teacher, the football teacher, or the football coach, the the uh, vice principal and the principal, all come through these big metal doors, and they're looking around. There's a lot of kids, so they're having trouble spotting me. I sneak through and hop on the bus, and the bus drives off. I get away. But the next day, same situation. They come into the, uh, the gym, and they find me. They bring Sam, Cameron, and I back to the principal's office. Okay, so we're walking down the hall toward the principal's office, and I'm kind of whispering to Sam and Cameron. They're they're kind of ahead of us. I'm whispering to Sam and Cam, and I'm like, hey, guys, leave the talking to me. Don't say anything. Deny. 
deny, deny. You know, I'm thinking like a real drug dealer now. This shit's gotten way out of hand. So we sit down back there, and the, t- the principal starts going, So, I heard you were selling weed in the locker room. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you're joking right now. And so I kind of look at her for a moment, and I say, Oh, teacher. Oh, principal. Hear me. I have been bullied for so long that these kids have started starting rumors about me to destroy my reputation and get me in trouble. I am amazed. Sam and Cameron here, they can back me up. That's what it all is. It's rumors. And I give this I give this childish baby act. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm getting away. And guess what? I do. I do get away. They don't catch me that day. They say, they actually end up saying, if anyone ever starts these rumors again, you come to us and we will deal with it. So I walk out. I'm feeling victorious. I am feeling triumphant. I am rolling in I I am just so happy I got out of this I'm in the clear Sam and Cameron are in the clear we are out of there um and the next day I'm sitting in a homeroom and the teacher the principal the vice principal the football coach they all come through the door and they're looking at me and they say little Micah come with us to the principal's office will you and I'm thinking oh no oh boy And they do. But what they do is they have me come sit on the couch outside of the principal's office. And then they call me in. And they look at me. And they say, Sam and Cameron broke. They told us everything. They told us it was a lie. They told us you told them to be quiet. And I'm thinking, Sam, Cam, why would you do this, you little shits? Why? Why would you break? You didn't have any evidence. What have you done? So they're saying, we have a full confession from both of them right here. And if you don't confess... We're calling the cops. So I'm sitting there. They're holding the phone. They've dialed 911. They haven't called yet, and they're saying, if you don't tell us right now, we're calling them. So I'm sitting there, and my 12-year-old mind, it can't take it anymore. I burst into tears, and I start going, I did it. I did it. I sold weed. I am sorry. I have repented. I will never do it again. And they say, no, you won't. And they send me out, and they sit on the couch. I'm sitting there. And my parents come walking through the door. They walk straight past me. They don't even look at me. My mom's in tears. She walks back into the principal's office. They inform her of everything, and then they call me in there. I'm thinking, oh, no. What is going to happen? Well, you can imagine what happened from there. Um, they actually did. They ended up expelling me. They let me finish my work, like all my schoolwork, at the, till the end of the year, and then they expelled me. Um, now, guys, I'm not going to sit here, and I'm not going to give you some long, drawn-out speech on why you shouldn't smoke weed or sell weed or whatever okay one it's illegal so i mean that's that's really reason enough because it's not it's not worth getting caught okay if you want to smoke weed go to colorado or go to license i hear i I went to california and they were like yeah it's so easy you just get this medical license say it's for medical and and you can smoke weed they can't do anything they don't care and so i mean if you're gonna smoke weed find a way to do it legally you know, if you have to go to Amsterdam, save up, do, do that. I don't care. Um, I'm not going to say don't smoke weed. I mean, smoking weed, I guess it's cool. Some people like it. I personally don't really care for it. But don't let it ruin your life, you know? I mean, it's it's cool. It's all right. Just, I mean, people say it can't ruin your life. You can't get addicted to it. I disagree. Now, maybe there's no, like, addictive chemicals in it, but you can probably get addicted to the high. I mean, don't, if you're going to sell, you know, it's just really not worth it, I don't think. Get a job, you know? There's jobs out there, and don't don't say you can't get a job. Like I said, I, I'm not trying to tell you don't smoke, don't sell, whatever. I, I just wouldn't let weed control your life, because, I mean, it's it wasn't really worth it. I mean, after this all happened, I was like, well... That was really, really stupid. Shouldn't have sold weed. That was just really stupid. You know, it, it hurt my parents. It, I ended up getting expelled, you know. It, it, yeah, it just it wasn't cool. So, moral of the story is... Uh, there's no moral of the story. Anyways, guys, uh, sorry this kind of went a little long. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, I'd love a like, comment. If you want, subscribe for more. Hopefully I'll start posting more. I'd like to do some more of these stories if I can think of some. So anyways, guys, have a good day and peace.